Why would one. anyone? That is one of the most foul things I've ever tasted. Welcome everyone. For WatchGuard, I'm Corey Nockreiner and you're watching Hot Predictions. It's the show with hot security predictions and even hotter wings. Joining me today is my senior security analyst and right-hand man, Mark LaLiberté. He's the host of the very popular The 443 Podcast. He helped co-authored the 2019 security predictions we're talking about. And he's an award-winning cybersecurity speaker globally. So welcome to our show, Mark. I would say thank you for having me on, but I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> if you're kind of a fan of internet pop culture, you might have seen The Hot Ones. It's the show about hot questions and hot wings. And more specifically, it's a show where Sean Evans does fantastic celebrity interviews. He has a lot of A-list celebrities nowadays, and they eat uh, uh, increasingly hot fantastically hot wings during the show. So I thought to make it a little more fun for our audience to spice things up, so to speak, that we would do a prediction themed show this time. So what do you think, Mark? Sounds like fun? Yeah, um, fun, <laughs> tons of fun. Well, as I mentioned, we're a, a big fan of the show ourselves. We love Sean Evans and his team. So this is kind of like our homage. But we're actually here today to talk about our 2019 security prediction. This is kind of our review episode where we kind of discuss the predictions and see which ones we got right and wrong. For every prediction we missed, we're going to have to eat a hot wing. So good idea, right, Mark? Yeah, and you know, just like the, uh, the show, we're not totally ripping off, but paying homage to. Uh, we've gotten them from what you've described as slightly spicy to absolute death. Yeah, blow your mind. Yeah, so, <laughs> hooray. And I think we'll use our traditional kind of win or fail that we've used in past podcast episodes. But I kind of got a surprise for you. I mean, if you're a Hot Ones fan, you don't want us just to eat some wings. And we've been relatively good at predictions in the past. So I plan on eating everyone. It's not an official rule, but it's absolutely up to you, Mark. Oh. Thank you. Thank <laughs> You're you for welcome. giving me that option. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> so anyways, now that we got the rules, I say we just dive right in uh, and get going. So why don't we jump in with the first prediction that we made for 2019. And this is kind of a weird one. AI-driven chatbots go rogue. So did we hit that? Did we miss it? Am I allowed to say we passed and then I don't eat the wing? <laughs> That's a nice hack, but we're not going to lie. We're going to be honest. Unfortunately, we failed. Yeah, chatbots did not go rogue. So before we guess or, or, or talk about it, I say we take our first wing. Great. Cheers. Here's Cheers. Here's starting. There's no attractive way of eating this, I think. Yeah, that's why we have the napkins. Do the classic. Remove that. Oh, that ain't so bad. A bit of a bite. All right, I think I got this now. That's going to be easy, right? That ain't so bad. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like a normal wing. We made it through one, but the, the prediction was AI-driven chatbots go rogue, and some people, that may sound like Greek to them. What did we mean by that prediction? You've probably noticed as you go on some shopping websites uh, or banking websites or whatever, every once in a while as you're navigating around, a little box pops up and say, hey, I'm Sally from blah, 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 blah. Can I help you with something? And we're predicting, or we did predict, that attackers would kind of abuse that system. Or maybe the lack of it if a site didn't have that. And then power it with AI so it could scale instead of having a real human being on the back end of it. Yeah, and yeah. use that basically to fish people as another form of trying to fish information out. Maybe say, oh, we need you to reset your password, go to this link, or transfer money here, or tell me your favorite pet's name or whatever. Yeah, I think our reasoning was essentially that there's a lot of web application flaws like cross-site scripting that literally allow you to make pop-ups from a site if they suffer from that. And we figured if a bank site didn't have their own chatbot, but it suffered from some flaw, it could be an opportunity for a bad guy to make a fake bot pop-up. It was a bit of an ambitious prediction, I think. Yeah, this is one, one of the few, most of our predictions, just so you know, audience, is, is are based on trends. So whether or not they hit, the underlying trend is 
that's pretty accurate. And by the way, web application attacks are a big underlying trend. But in this case, there was no evidence of this being done before, so it was kind of a Hail Mary and it looks yep. like we failed. Hooray, yay for the wing. <laughs> yeah, but I do have another surprise for you, Mark. I mean, this would not be the hot ones if it wasn't an interview show. Oh, great. So I thought along the way, you know, uh, it would be good for our audience to learn a bit about you. So uh, another question more for you is we're both gamers, you know, we play video games, tabletop games, card games, and otherwise, but I know you have a soft place in your heart for kind of card games. Mm -hmm. So if you were trapped on a desert island with, no, but with, with some other people, but you could only bring one card game, would it be Magic the Gathering or Pokemon? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So. I mean, I haven't played Pokemon in like 15 years. But. Not as a card game, but I hear you uh, might like the Switch version. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, alone or yeah. with friends? With friends. You have Magic a couple is people. a very fun alone. Yeah, it's not exactly a solitaire game. Not the right I, I guess game. it has to default to Pokemon then. Yeah. Okay, cool. This is the spiciest sauce I've ever had, by the way. Really? That's yeah. as high as you've gone? Yep. Oh, this will be a fun show. All right. So let's get to the predictions. Industrial control systems targeted with ransomware. Did that come true? A win or fail? That was a big win, thankfully. Yeah. So before we discuss it, though, let's dive in and have some aardvark. <sighs> C'est la vie. <laughs> there we go. At least it tastes good. All right. So we were talking about industrial control system hacks, and while you chew some, some just background on the prediction, we've seen a lot of targeted ransomware. It started going after consumers, but then it went after things like healthcare and governments, and we just extrapolated that another type of organization that you know might have critical uptime requirements but be susceptible to extortion with ransomware could be industrial control systems. So, it makes sense. Like yeah. we're we're thinking of companies that if they have any downtime at all, they're losing tons of money uh, and have really causing a chain reaction too. Like industrial control systems it could be power grids, it could be manufacturing things where if they yeah. go down the damage their supply massive. chain like if you're a car manufacturer or something millions of dollars of loss because it just puts a, a big skunks works or a gear in your your gears <laughs> a wrench a, in your a gears. gear in your gears <laughs> there we go <laughs> i have the best words stable genius so right how did there. we do you said we won we did yeah there was it was the norse kydro ransomware attack yeah. was i think the first example we had yep uh really we talked about it on the 443 probably like 50 times but if you haven't watched that you should um but they're a aluminum manufacturing firm, I think the largest in the world or something like that. And they got hit with ransomware so bad that they basically had to go to manual offline manufacturing mode, which yeah. of course when your systems are reliant on online connected systems to run efficiently, when you go into manual mode, you lose quite a bit of productivity and it caused them quite a bit of damages and downtime from that attack. I think there's actually a second, uh, and this was less in the news. I forget the name of the company, but there was an African, uh, maybe in Johannesburg if I remember right, actual power grid company that got hit by ransomware too, and it did af actually affect the power. Hooray, we predicted awful things. Yeah. And by the way, I noticed you're you're taking the win challenge right now. So good job. Congratulations on the first unnecessary wing. I'll so keep, far. Keep going with you. <laughs> but Bye. I do have a second question for you, and this is what the viewers really want to know. You, who cares about the predictions? Exactly. <laughs> so the second question, you know, viewers may not know that you're a gunner. And uh, for pronounced gunner. Gunner, I'm sorry. That Come proves how, how much of a posing fan I am and how much <laughs> of an arsenal, if you don't know what gunner is, super fan you are. So as someone that's from this side of the pond, the, the side that the, the arsenal is not on, how did you become such a big arsenal fan and why did you pick them in particular? Uh, well, soccer fan in general is the first start where I grew up playing soccer my whole life. Um, from basically the time I could walk, I was in soccer camps. And the reason I chose arsenal specifically was, this was like a decade or so ago when I needed to find an EPL team because they were finally showing up on TV and my older brother was a Spurs fan, so naturally I chose their biggest rival. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And so far we've had a bit more <laughs> trophies than they have, so <laughs> success. <laughs> Too bad, brother. So follow-up question, uh, should Unai Emery be sacked? Absolutely. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> no elaboration on no, that. I mean, I like the guy, but he's not coming He's not the performing. Job. Yep, and I have a feeling that every single gooner out there probably agrees with me. Cool. Well, Great. we're on a roll. <laughs> Let's keep going then. 
The next prediction I think you played a, hard, a large part on, uh, and it was essentially that there would be a vapor worm attack. And we'll get to describing that, but uh, did we win or fail on that one? We did. Really quickly, we won. Ooh, I, yeah. I am going to eat those, so up to you. Ghost this is, pepper and blueberry. Yeah, yeah, from the Bravado Spice Company. I love blueberries. I think we're still right around the 10,000 range, if I remember right. Salute. Or actually, maybe we're at 28,000 now. Oh, great. What was sriracha again? 2,000. Great. So, what is that? 14 times? Not the best taste. So what are you doing with the uh, the bone? Like, oh, okay. Nailed it. Apparently some Hot One fans get upset at guests that do it. And some guy showed a trick where you take the smaller bone in the wing and you pull it, twist and pull it out, and then you can just peel oh, the bite like off. Professional wing eaters or something? Actually, Sean Evans thinks they're crazy and he says, just take a bite any way you want. <laughs> that one's a bit spicy. Still alive. Am I sweating yet? <laughs> Not yet. So a vapor worm, what does that even mean? Yeah, so this one kind of followed the, the evolutions we've been seeing in malware in general. Uh, we started seeing, obviously, ransomware was pretty big, 2015, 2016, and then it evolved in 2017, where it added worm-like self-replication, basically. So instead of user interaction, uh, it could spread automatically by exploiting vulnerabilities in network-connected protocols and systems. Yeah. And then 2018 or so, we started seeing fileless malware really start to shoot off, yeah. which fileless malware, basically what a name says, uh, malware where the malicious code never gets saved in a file on the hard drive. It resides solely in memory. It can either be injected in there from some compromised process or more commonly loaded up with like PowerShell scripts out of yeah. Word documents, stuff like that. They might sometimes, like you say, inject processes so there's no file or PowerShell. It's just legitimate, a legitimate scripting language, but it can be used maliciously. Exactly. So we were predicting that um, fileless malware would take a similar evolution to ransomware and that it would add self-like replication. Yeah. So it's kind of a callback to our ransomware prediction in 2016, which did hit because of WannaCry, exactly. but on, on a different type of malware. So in this particular case, we made the prediction, like we don't actually November make them on December 31st, we make them in like early yeah, November or so. I think we were mid-November. And uh, it was like November 30th or 31st or something. Um, Oh, Bladabindi is what it's yeah. called. Uh, I think it was <laughs> That's Bladabindi's the name of a Trojan, if you yep. haven't heard. I think it was Trend Micro put out some research on this yeah. new fileless malware worm, basically, um, that was spreading via USB sticks, I yep. think. Um, and it was had its own like launcher script in order to run its malware memory. Yep. It did end up downloading other traditional malware, too, but it was a great example of how fileless malware yeah. can propagate without users clicking on stuff. Yeah, so fileless, self-spreading gets the worm part. It, it, I, I consider it a win still. I would say a hard hit on that would be rather than the USB method of fileless spreading would be similar to like a, a file share attack like what uh, WannaCry did, but we still won on that, and so we great are, job for us. Like basically WannaCry spread because of SMB, like the eternal blue vulnerabilities. Yeah. And we just had a whole bunch of, not zero days, but critical vulnerabilities in RDP, remote desktop protocol, and yeah. older versions of Windows. So that kind of like opens the door for, for other things. Yeah, very wormable for sure. Yeah. Now for a question for you. Uh, so on Hot Ones, they have this segment called Explain That Gram. Unfortunately for me, you're kind of a security expert, so your Instagram and Facebook are private. But if someone could hand me the, the pictures or our laptop, uh, I have a new segment called Translate That Tweet. Uh, so I have a few pictures here we got from your, your Twitter. And I, I just want you to call out some more context and just give us the bigger story about what, what's in the picture. Uh -oh. So there's the first one for you. Okay. Uh, sure so let this the is. Camera see. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have a minor addiction. Uh, minor addiction. <laughs> Funko Pop vinyl things. Yeah. And I probably have like three dozen or so. Yeah, a local company too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, based in Everett, right? Yeah. So I've got a collection of them at my desk at work. And it was probably four or five years ago now, myself and Richard Gilmore, one of our support, actually QA engineers now. Yeah. We've had uh, him on really old, like Radio Free Security was old podcast we've had you on. And yep. I think you've been on. We had a contest when we were both in support uh, on Holiday Cheer. 
Uh, we were specifically limited to $20, uh, and we had to go on Amazon.com and see who could make their desk the most festive, basically. So I bought like a $1.50 strand of LEDs super glued to some wires, uh, this little snowman that's still chugging along five yeah, years later, out in your cube. and then a bag of these little uh, these holiday hats, which now every year I stick on my little Yeah, uh, I can attest to that. There. Four years in a row. I do have a confession me. to make. I didn't take them down after last year, <laughs> so these are actually the ones from the year before. <laughs> I love Christmas. Yeah. Here's another one we got from your Instagram. I think uh, yeah. those don't look like Gooners, though. <laughs> no, this was uh, right before the MLS Cup final. Sounders won. Yay. Uh, we now have two stars. Awesome. And I think this is related, but since you're a celebrity, I know you're always hanging out with them. So <laughs> tell us a bit about that. Uh, my favorite soccer celebrity, Mr. Roger Levesque. Uh -huh. Unfortunately <laughs> retired, but still works with the team. Uh, he was one of the, not original Sounders, but he was a Sounder from before the MLS days that we kind of carried over. I, I hate to admit it, he wasn't the best Sounder ever, but he was genuinely the nicest Sounder ever. So he still he stops like around the guy. bars and hangs out with people. That's really awesome. good guy. And we know you're a worldwide award-winning speaker as seen oh, yes. on TV apparently. So what's with the face though? Uh, I was probably talking about, I don't know, maybe I ate too many hot wings now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> this was at an interview at, uh, what was it? Digital ITX, I think they rebranded now. It used to be IP Expo Europe. Uh, where uh, went on this other podcast and just talked about security. I think I scared one of the reporters a little too much because <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be like it wasn't a security focused conference, but I brought all these security topics to this podcast and yeah. kind of scared the crap out of her. It oh, does well. that. Yeah. That's why we always I did end our podcast. tips on how to defend yourself. But. <laughs> and finally, I think this would be a great, like uh, the picture they put in frames they sell or, or maybe it's some sort of Instagram model. <laughs> What's going on with that picture? Uh, yes, so this one was a recent trip to Hawaii. <laughs> we I heard about this hike uh, that they said, oh, it's a little muddy, it's kind of long, steep, whatever. Uh, it turned out to be very muddy. It was like an hour and a half each way through just like past ankle deep mud. You had to cross a bunch of streams, but at the very end of it was this picturesque little like pool of water and a waterfall. It looks beautiful. There are people yeah. jumping off the waterfall, people a little more brave than I am. But anyways, I was just If you ever drove the, the road to Hen, I'm sure you have. There's lots of stops like that. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a sucker for waterfalls, so Absolutely. that was a fun hike, even though it was, I slipped a few times and ended up, I felt so bad for the Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> So the prediction to go with this one, and this is one I really liked, I think it needs to happen, but it was the UN proposes a cybersecurity treaty. Did, did we win or lose on this guy? We failed, with a slight caveat that I'll gotcha. add. Gotcha. Well, that's good. Let's uh, grab our wing. Cheers to uh, Dobo Loco. <laughs> Thank you again for this beautiful thing we're doing. Hmm. Not the best. I kind of like the taste. Mm, yeah. Tastes like death. <laughs> Ooh. Is it a creeper? Is it the, the one oh. that kind of sneaks up on you? It's got a kick. <laughs> Those are the ones that are dangerous. They give you confidence as you're biting and then five minutes or, or 50 seconds later, you're like, what happened? <laughs> uh, all right, I'm alive. What were you talking about? UN and cyber treaties. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, believe it or not, countries like to hack each other. Uh, and it's been happening more and more recently. I don't know if it's been happening more or just publicized in the news a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I think if, if we all remember Stuxnet, but if you look into Olympic Games, the alleged uh, kind of project that was based on, I think planning of it goes back to 20, 2007, I should say. We just that never heard of, of it. Open Pandora's box. And since then, we've had alleged interference with the US election. We've had people hacking Saudi Arabia, people hacking Iran, people hacking the United States, people hacking everyone, basically. And it's kind of boiling up to this point where we predicted that finally the United Nations is going to reach a tipping point and create some sort of cyber warfare, cyber whatever yeah, treaty. Rules of, rules of engagement. I mean, we have that for normal wars. What's allowed in? and what's not allowed. Yep. And it didn't pass. That said, there was like a working group kind of started for it. Um, started by <laughs> Russia, funny enough. Yeah, um, and China, I think, was involved. And China, <laughs> yeah. Not the, not the countries we would. The, the pure victims, I, I don't know what their motives were behind it, but no. 
obviously it didn't really get very far. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that happened a few times over the years, yep. and, and the U.S. is the one that actually nixed that. And it, it seems like, you know, not, if, if you look at what the working group came up with, they had some rules that I do think a lot of nations could get on board with, but I think essentially uh, China and Russia were also basically trying to say each nation had control of their uh, internet kills. They could control and, and quote unquote censor their internet when they wanted to. Which, I mean, they're kind of already yeah. doing anyway. And presumably that's what the U.S. didn't want to sign off on. Yep. Oh. I sense, do I sense hiccups coming out? <laughs> Feeling the, the lips are nice and numb, that's always a bless. Uh, my tongue is on fire girl. It, it helps enunciate as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, those that know you know throughout your life you've been friends with a lot of bartenders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I presume that means... <laughs> Friends. Oh yeah? Just yes. friends. <laughs> I, I presume that means you, you, you know some pretty good cocktails. So what is your favorite pre or post concert cocktail? Pre or post? Uh, I would say pre would have to be just a nice classy old fashioned. That sounds great. Post, usually by then I'm in like vodka soda territory. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs>The whole theme of our predictions in 2019 was the cyber apocalypse. So very fitting hot sauce. The video we put out today. was fantastic. Yeah, too. way better than this one. <laughs> I don't know. I think this could get more views. You could probably stop watching right about now. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to eat any more wings. <laughs> but do check out the 2019 predictions videos from last year. Even though we'll we'll talk about new ones. Uh, it is a cool video. Uh, Mark should win the Emmy or something. I'm, we got snubbed. <laughs> I'm disappointed still. So the next prediction is a WPA3, a WPA3 hack demonstrates the industry-wide lack of Wi-Fi security. And we're marking this one as a win. Yeah, yeah, so, I'm pretty sure. So hooray. you don't have to eat. <laughs> what is this one again? <laughs> the zombie apocalypse. Oh, all right. If you want to know the Scoville. Oh good, it's gluten free. This is just hitting six figures, 100,000. You forgot the... Uh, <laughs> What, 100,000? 100,000 Scoville. Hmm. Ooh, oh man. It's getting to the point where you can taste the heat right away. And you feel like you can see your breath. <laughs> <laughs> you still alive? <laughs> There's a point where even breathing, you start to feel it. That's always oh, man. fun. This is fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you and I have very different <laughs> definitions of fun, my friend. I guess I owe you a bonus after that. Oh, so what were we talking? You heard it here. W <laughs> WPA3, <laughs> Wi-Fi is insecure. Wait, yes. I thought WPA3 was like really secure. Oh, <laughs> WPA3 secure. Stuff. is secure. Um, it does bring stronger handshake so it protects against the crack vulnerability that came out late in WPA2's life. Um, it adds some additional, oh man, I'm gonna die. <laughs> um, Remember, by the way, you might yes, want to this switch is the eyes and nose. Yeah. Uh, this is the mouth. Oh, that's smart. I didn't even pick that strategy. Yeah. Um, WPA3, so uh, yes, WPA3 is more secure. It has additional handshake benefits, stuff like that. There's some other technical protocol things that came along with it. But that doesn't make wireless entirely secure. Um, and in fact, some researchers in early this year, last year, whenever this video comes out, early 2019, found some vulnerabilities in the WPA3 handshake that they called Dragon Blood. Yeah. It was like Dragonfly <laughs> and like some other, I think the handshake is called Dragonfly. I don't remember. We usually hate marketing names, but Dragon Blood's pretty cool. Oh, it's hardcore. Um, so they found vulnerabilities in the handshake <laughs> that could allow attackers to, it took a lot of effort, but they could basically recover keys and stuff like that yeah. to crack the handshake and view encrypted protected traffic. So it was almost a direct hit in a way on, w, on WPA3 having a hack. And to be fair, it would win either way, but we kind of, what we were subtly trying to get at was we didn't know for sure if WPA3 would be hacked, but one of our arguments is whether or not WPA3 is secure, Wi-Fi itself on a layer two level has an issue. 
and it's all the evil twin attacks and the karma attacks where before you even do that that kind of WPA2 or 3 authentication people can can sneak your clients to their evil network and man in the middle of you because you're not getting that security when you're that's exactly happening. so that is still a big security risk yeah. WPA3 won't solve that uh, Wi-Fi 6 won't solve it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you really need other tools to protect you against. And by the way, since we're talking Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6 is uh, essentially more on the access part of the standard. It does include a WPA3 as being a requirement, yep. I think, but there's not a whole lot new security-wise there. No, just more oomph. So another question for you, though. Uh, so those that that know you might know that you do a little bit of DJing in your spare time. In <laughs> fact, you've composed a few tracks. But a pretty simple question, you know, as you're writing your own music. Uh, who are the top three musicians or DJs that kind of influence your style? Oh man, um, first one's definitely a dude named Olenium, yeah. who I may or may not be seeing three times this week. <laughs> oh awesome, yeah. in a week, wow. Yeah. Number two, probably uh, Martin Garrix, he's a big one that yeah. most people have probably heard of. Um, and then the other one would probably be Seven Lions, who's actually now a local dude. Oh, I don't remember where he's from, but he lives up in, I think, Bothell now. Through my friends with my bartenders, I've uh, <laughs> ran into him at least once, I think, uh, awesome. up at a bar in Bothell. Cool. Maybe we'll get the, the pleasure of hearing your music on a podcast one day. That'd Someday. be awesome. It smells like horrible, horrible things. So for this next prediction, and this is a big one, was hackers would hijack the internet. And I'll give it away, it was with uh, BGP and DNS is what we're thinking, we'll talk about that. But first, uh, hit or miss, win or fail? Hit? <laughs> no. It was unfortunately a fail. Uh, close. Close, yes. but still a fail. We'll talk about why it was close, but this was a fail. I think if uh, hackers hijacked the internet, they would know. But Probably. let's give this one a try. <laughs> Good uh, luck. You can do the bites if you want. That's what. Don't think I've written my. The show yet. does. <laughs> I'm hoping a little bit of the meat will. Oh, maybe not. That's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh, man. It's like drinking gasoline. You've got to give credit to Sean Evans. He has to keep asking questions. And I don't know how he talks. No. <laughs> All right. What are we talking about? <laughs> Hackers hijacking the internet. BGP. Hackers hijacking the yeah. internet. So it sounds kind of hardcore, uh, but our prediction revolved around, like you said, BGP and DNS. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know if it's good to breathe or not. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> Where basically our internet's built on these two main protocols. Um, there's <laughs> BGP is the routing protocol oh, behind. Oh, I forgot to say, I gave all a Mr. Pepper spray. <sighs> I'm dying. Hold on. You talk. <laughs> uh, uh, I su swallowed spit. <laughs> <laughs> um. I can talk, I can talk. All right. So basically there's two, <coughs> wow, hiccup. As Corey's dying, BGP is the protocol that kind of is the backbone of the internet. Defines Order where our, yeah, where uh, networks are located, um, who's allowed to advertise what IP spaces. Talking mix is so much worse. <laughs> and then DNS is the protocol that resolves whatever you type in your browser into, um, oh, I'm just so happy. <laughs> um, into an IP address so your browser knows where to connect to. And, and we they're, predicted they're, that... <laughs> and, the, and they're both like key parts of the internet, are, right? Yeah. Without um, DNS, you can't find anything. Without BGP, you literally can't route anything. And unfortunately, anything. BGP is super insecure. There was no security built into it. It relies basically on the trust system. And we saw right before we made this prediction that trust system was kind of broken when... Um, a small telco in Nigeria was able to hijack internet traffic for Google and Cloudflare and uh, send it through <laughs> uh, Russia and into China and then into Nigeria. It kind of crashed in the Great Firewall of China, basically. Oh, I got my own. Don't worry. I came prepared. So we made a prediction that attackers would abuse that system in order to hijack traffic maliciously. Yep. Um, they didn't. 
Uh, but there were still a few more instances of BGP hijacks, whether intentional or unintentional, <laughs> across the internet. And I think there was, of the instances we're going to talk about, there was one that is rumored to be slightly malicious. Mm -hmm. So there was one, it was like a Taiwan's uh, public uh, DNS provider had their BGP network hijacked, but there was another one where China may or may not have intentionally yeah. hijacked so, uh, I think uh, it mobile was traffic telco. for European yeah. telcos. There you basically. go, that's it. Mobile traffic for European telcos temporarily went through yep. China. Not the whole internet, but... Could have been a man in the middle attack due to BGP. Could have been. <laughs> Corey, you look great, by the way. <laughs> I, I am feeling this. There's definitely no doubt about that. So, as anyone that uh, follows you on Twitter knows, you really seem to love your job. I am not sure he would agree with that I today. used to. <laughs> <laughs> but what first sparked your interest in technology, coding, and security? Probably my dad. Because uh, he was in coding, he uh, actually founded a company and then stayed with him for like 30-something years um, that basically wrote software for power distributions. That's awesome, yeah. And so because of that, we I constantly had access to computers, computer parts, technology, whatever. That access basically enabled me to really fall in love with computers, and it was just yeah. a... Like, I actually didn't go to school originally for computers when I first went to school. It was going to be like aerospace engineering because wow. it seemed cool. Yeah. But I kind of was always gonna end up with computers, and here I am. I'm glad you did, man. We wouldn't want it without you, despite the fact that it seems I'm trying to kill you. You know how I always say I'm trying to steal your job? <laughs> I'm gonna steal our CEO's job and fire you. <laughs> <laughs> so this next prediction, it's one I've been pushing a lot, is a, a biometric hack would show the weakness of using biometrics as a single factor of authentication. Win or fail? Win? Yeah, you can get away with not eating this guy, my friend. The problem is, I went all in with eating the whole damn wing. I'm so not eating the whole damn I wing, I don't think it's good for me, but... I will take a little mark bite. Oh, this does not taste good. Great. Mmm. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope, hard pass. If you want... Oh. You might like hot, but if you like taste, I have to say this would be not one you buy for taste. Why would anyone? That is one of the most foul things I've ever tasted. Ashley Food Co. Uh-oh. We just opposite buzz market them. I'm going to find where your computers are. So cool. Biometrics. We did win on this. Uh, why did we win on it? So uh, I'll, I'll explain while, while you're getting ready. So this one was simply that, you know, Microsoft Hello, our mobile phones, all our devices are moving right, biometrics. We've okay. heard that passwords are That's dead. going to be easy, right? I don't I think they're, they're dead, but people misuse them. Biometrics are easy. They're very usable. They so take away a lot of the friction and authentication. So a lot of companies <coughs> are moving to biometrics <laughs> yeah. as a form of authentication. But one of the problems I see is they're using it as, as just a single factor, just a biometric, the same way we use just a password. And uh, we think biometrics can be hacked. Face ID has been hacked by researchers. Android's touch mechanism has been hacked over and over. So we thought there would be a hack <laughs> that show why biometrics are could be an issue. Mm -hmm. So we didn't win on that. What was the hack? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me, boss man. <laughs> Nothing else you want to talk about? I can give a few examples. There was um, Samsung they were Galaxy. Dutch, Dutch researchers. Right. Um, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Android, uh, what do they call it? Trusted face? Yep. Uh, is a, usually uses just a image based of authentication. And some Dutch researchers took hundreds of Android phones and showed that 40% of them could easily be bypassed just using pictures or sometimes animated pictures. Yep, I knew that. Just wanted to make you talk. <laughs> uh, there was actually another example pretty recently, too. The latest Samsung Galaxy S10 phones have an ultrasonic thumbprint reader yeah. uh, through the screen, and it turns mm. out, no, eyes, not mouth. Um, <laughs> they were reading the, uh, the screen protector mm on the phone instead of the thumb if you had a screen protector on it. God, I'm dying. <laughs> um, I feel this one. Imagine <laughs> eating the whole wing. This is the worst idea you've ever had. I love it. Um, they were I reading the, as I'm crying. the screen kind of protector. Up on the tier. So it turns out no matter what thumb you put on it, you've got to unlock the phone. So people like me know that you really like gummy bears. 
So here's a fun one. Who wins in a knife fight? Swedish fish or Coke bottle gummies? If you asked like 16 year old me, Swedish fish, I ate far too many of them over the past decade or so. And I just, I can't do Swedish fish anymore. So no more Swedish fish? Coke bottle gummy bears win by default. Awesome. What's your favorite color gummy bear? Anything but yellow. So, you're doing great so far, but we are Super. on the last prediction, and you kind of know what that means. I'll start with the last prediction, because we kind of saved this for last, since it kind of matches the theme of the show. Our last prediction is a nation state launches a fire sale. Yep. Fire is a great topic right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Super good. But as you know, we are on to the last prediction. And that means we're actually on to Hot Ones brand, the Last Dab Redux. It's kind of tradition around the Hot Ones anyways to add a, a dab of hot sauce to the last wing. I'm going to break that tradition. <laughs> this is seriously well, the worst idea we've ever had. That's quite a dab. Oh, man. I'll, I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> but just <laughs> to remind you, there Nailed you it. go. That's a dab. <laughs> <laughs> the last, uh, so a nation state launches a fire sale. We'll explain what that means in a moment, but did we win or fail? Nah, we failed. Which unfortunately is why we dabbed. Yeah. So here it is. This is the last one. I think we can do it. This definitely deserves a cheers. Get the dab away from me. Thank you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Going to regret that one. So, tastes better than that one. I mean, I think the the good flavor stopped like right about here. <laughs> um, so your good sensitivity is all about heat scale, then, right? I, I think I told you that my my acclimation of this is literally sriracha, yeah. and like this is the hottest I've ever had. So I respect, by the way. I, in all open honesty, I have had million Scoville, like a Devil's Tickle and stuff like that. So. A Devil's Tickle. Yeah, <laughs> and so I've, I, I knew what was coming. So to come on it fresh, I remember my first reaction. You're doing fantastic, man. You're rocking it. So that bonus. <laughs> yeah, <there laughs> we go. You would have earned a bonus no matter what. Oy vey. If you watch Die Hard Four. Uh, it had, it kind of coined the term fire sale, and if I remember right, that was a hack where hackers were going after financial organizations, transportation organizations, and industrial controller energy organizations, all at the same time to create, you know, chaos. And, excuse me, in that movie, it was all under the guise of a different attack. This was kind of a smokescreen to a different attack. I remember when I first watched Die Hard 4, it seemed like the silliest fictional idea in the world. Just it, it's classic bad hacking it, at the time, I thought. But if you think about it, there have been attacks against banks. The SWIFT network, they've done million dollar transaction from banks. There's definitely been attacks on transportation systems. ICS attacks, we hear, you know, not only the ones we mentioned uh, just earlier, but the FBI warning about attacks on the smart grid. So. We figured that all these attacks do exist today. Someone could put them together and actually pull this off. But they didn't. <laughs> yeah, they <Jerks>. didn't. <laughs> Why couldn't you? Please. You could have saved, saved Mark from the last tab. <laughs> he could have quit. Uh, <laughs> there were a few individual hacks. Like, didn't like Ukraine? No, not Ukraine's power grid. That happened a few years ago. There was another power grid that got hit just this last year. Um, I didn't see any public transportation hits though. So yeah, still yeah. fail. Total fail. So we ate the wing though, but let's get to the fun stuff. I do want to ask you one final question. And it has been great talking to you, Matt, or Mark. I'm glad I can't even remember your name. It's so hot. Same I'm with you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for, for having the bravery to do this. But the last question is, if you could share a meal with any three people, living or dead, who would they be? Oh man, that's a tough one. Yeah. Lots of options or not enough options? Uh, I'm gonna say living, anyone, my mom, because she makes the best food. <laughs> and it's not hot? Uh, and it's, yeah, she's even more adverse to any of this, I think, I don't know. She, I imagine she hates spicy stuff. Um, dead, let's say uh, Mr. Turing, because he was an absolute genius and it'd be fun to pick his brain. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, Alan Turing, by the way, 
basically saved the Allies during uh, World War II by cracking the Enigma. Yeah. Uh, the Enigma machine, really cool encryption machine. Um, and then one more. Uh, the other one probably have to be Elon Musk because I imagine he's he entertaining because he's insane. Uh, he's a genius, so it'd be fun to pick his brain. Uh, and I would love to see what tweets came out of it afterwards. And maybe he could take us to space. And maybe he could take us to space. You should get to know him, man. I, Real quick follow-up yeah. on that. Same question as far as dead or alive. Who would you replace your navigation systems with? Whose voice? Uh, I think Samuel L. Jackson's already an option. I gotta do that. Those mother beeping yep. Ubers in traffic. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it would probably be him just because it would be entertaining again. Look at you, Mark, man. You made it all the way through the hot wing gauntlet. You ate all the wings, despite the fact that you didn't have to. I wasn't sure if I was going to be doing this alone. You should definitely be proud. You've had less practice than me. So there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, and this camera. What do you have going on with WatchGuard? Uh, well, I'm looking for a new job. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Um, right now, we actually just released our 2020 predictions. Uh, watchguard.com slash predictions or secured prediction. Do I have a red mouth? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, very much so. You're a messy eater, Carl. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. More podcasts coming out every week. See you guys after the and They're all Hot Wins themed, right? Never Check out again. the 443. No, we're done. This was... <laughs> What about 2020 when this gets billions of views? Um, no, we'll find another thing. We can eat gummy bears Sounds and Skittles. Good. And Thank you, man. It's been great. Cheers. Yeah. We, can, we can hit our milk now. It has been great. <laughs> Bye, guys. I quit. <laughs>